Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is fifth period AP Bio. Say hi. Hi. And um, we're picking up a speciation, um, the process by which you, it's a form of what kind of evolution, micro or macro? Macro. macro evolution. So, my friends, what do you think is the most common form of macro evolution? Um, oh, you are so smart. Allopatric speciation. When some sort of barrier, geographic barrier, separates a population, they're going to have different initial, what? Selection. Allele frequencies. Oh, what else? They're going to have different, what? Selection, Selection pressures, and they're going to undergo different Mutation. mutations. Exactly. And so even if they are rejoined together, they've accrued so many differences that they become reproductively isolated. And so if I had time, I'd have you explain this. Sorry, we already did. We're backtracking just for you. Um, so here's an example of allopatric speciation. What do we call this, where we can see a species separating and then rejoining and they're different? Those are called ring, ring species, exactly. So here you can see salamanders. Uh, migrating southward and they ran into the Death Valley. One went left, one went right. They accrued differences over time. When they rejoined, they were so different, they no longer wanted to have sex together. And we also talked about, um, we have two situations here. Which one do you think is an example of speciation? On the left or on the right? Think about it. Class, which one? Right. On the right, because you can see that they are two different species. Exactly. All right, now to here. Okay, that's where we left off, right? Yeah. Okay. So, allopatric speciation, Darwin's finches, ping pong back and forth, start at the top, work your way to the bottom. Explain what happened, how did it happen, pay attention to the pictures. Go. Oh. All right, let's talk about this. Can I jump in? So here we have one species, one species of bird on this island. They live at the top of the island where it looks green and there's palm trees. It's very lush. But as more and more birds were there, probably you increased what? Competition. competition. So some birds are like, peace out. Um, I need to find another place to live, too much competition. So they, let's say, flew to another island. But that other island, does it look as lush as the first island? No, what's growing on it? Cactus. Cactus, it's very dry. So what would be adaptive in their original, right here, lush and green, is probably different. And so over time, those adaptations would be selected for. Now, um, so this is why it says right here, they are allopatric species because they are separated from one another, okay? Now let's say the competition is getting fierce on the dry island. So some of those birds fly back or it's a storm or something, it brings them back to the original island. But now they're adapted not for the wet area of it, but the dry area of it. And then they, um, you can still have ones on the original population, they will no longer interbreed. Now, do they look different to you? Can you see a difference? What is it? Yeah, probably the beak. Now, this is called character displacement when a trait has changed over time. Um, another thing, we'll be talking about this at the end of the school year, this could be called resource partitioning, which says, I'll take the top of the island, you take the bottom and it decreases the amount of competition you have between those two species except for right there at that line in the middle this would be kind of like going to the movie theater right you have your seat somebody else has their seat and it's like who gets the armrest right that's the only competition it's not like you're sitting at the movie theater like trying to be in both seats right you've limited your competition to just where the armrest is or the back seat of the car and your brother's like his legs over here right um, so that would be, um, then it, it keeps your fitness high because you're not battling all the time. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Um, so on this picture in 34, um, on the previous slide, so um, it says that the populations are allopatric. So when you say the left one is allopatric, it's just not allopatric speciation? Yeah, when they're separated, they're allopatric. 
When they come back together, they're sympatric. One form of speciation is a result of your being allopatric, that you approve differences. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So the left one's still allopatric, it's not speciation. It's not allopatric speciation. Well, here they're allopatric in this, because you can't see where I'm pointing. Here they're allopatric because they're separated. Here they are sympatric again. Yeah, does that make sense? Sympatric side by side, allopatric, you are separated. Okay, all right. Um, now, one of the things that might happen in your separation is you might get some new adaptation that is just structurally different. Um, and dewlaps are these aeoli lizards, I believe is their first name. And so they have this little flap and it can be different colors. And this is not in your textbook. I'm showing you this because this is some current research that's getting done. And so I want you to be familiar. I'm gonna revisit this towards the end of the lecture. Um, but if you are living, remember that dry environment we saw in that other, that other slide, right? It was dry in the cactus. There, if everything is dry and kind of light colored, it would be better to have a dark colored dewlap because then that would stand out and you could attract your mate with your dewlap. That's part of your behavioral, um, your dance or your mating dance is showing them your dewlap, okay? Um, but if you are in a dark forested area, it wouldn't be good to have a dark dewlap. You would want a lighter dewlap, yeah. And so in your separation, maybe your gametes would still fuse, but because you look so different, they're not even considering you uh, as to reproduce with you and it keeps your species isolated so that's reinforcement of reproductive isolation and oldest bio buddy wants to explain it and also show it in the notes as well go all right so allopatric speciation, we were separating. Sympatric speciation, we were side by side. Now it could be that you're some little beetle and you decide I wanna live on the top of the leaf and the other one wants to live on the bottom. So kind of like a microhabitat. Or you are a snake and one says I wanna eat slugs, the other one doesn't like slugs. And so it could be something within your environment you're exploiting a little bit differently. But a third way would be this. On Lord Howe Island, there in Australia, grove of trees, and right in the middle of the grove of trees is a totally different group of trees, like sprung up right in the middle. So when it's that kind of situation, it's probably going to be due to what? Chromosomes, okay? Something to do with chromosomes. Now, sympatric speciation and chromosomes, there are two categories. So let me show you the word picture first, which is no picture. Okay, just words. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll show you pictures, okay? There is autopolyploidy and allopolyploidy. Autopolyploidy, if you were a plant and you had 24 chromosomes in your body, that was your 2N number, your gamete should have how many? 12. 12, right? But what if you did non disjunction, failure to separate? So instead, your gametes don't have 12, they have 24, right? You and I, that would be bad, right? But in plants, they seem to be able to hang with polyploidy a lot better than we, we can. So what if multiple gametes were made for some reason like that? Then you could have one gamete that has 24 chromosomes and another one that has 24 chromosomes. Do they still have all their homologous pairs? Yeah. 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 So the 24 and the 24 get together and they are a 48. So that's different than the original parent species who was 24, right? And as long as they can survive, that would be a form of speciation. Now, strawberries that you eat today um, are 8N, 8N. Okay, we're 2N individuals, right? They are 8N. Um, if you looked at wild strawberries, have you ever seen wild strawberries? They are very, very Chinese. small. Yeah, they're smaller than a raspberry, okay? Um, but we have selected for larger and larger and larger fruit. Something to think about in your head, because we always think fruit healthy, which I'm not disagreeing with that, but like wild apples, normal apples are not huge, they are what? Small, okay? But we have selected artificially for them to be bigger and bigger, and what are they gonna have more inside of them? 
Well, what is it going to be in an apple? Sugar. It's going to be fructose. And so you have to think about that with fruit. You know, when you think about how we evolved and how much sugar we can handle, if somebody's a diabetic, can they eat a bunch of really big, huge, sweet apples? No, because you have to worry about sugar content, right? Sugar is sugar is sugar. And so, um, anyway, so our strawberries are 8N. Now, allopolyploidy is different. Two different species. Totally did myomyomiosis correctly. Sperm fertilizes the egg. But these are not homologous chromosomes because they're two different species, yes? But if they undergo the S stage of, my, of um, interface and they double up, now they have homologous pairs. Okay? And that would be an allopolyploidy. So auto, the first one, are derived from a single species, right? Non-disjunction, making a polyploid that could be 6N, 8N, whatever. Allopolyploidy is two different species forming a new one. So I'm going to let you have a chance. Not it. Decide which one you're going to explain, whoever won that nodditedness. Okay, and first up is autopolyploidy. Go. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, they cannot go back and have sex with the parent offspring because their foreign number is now 12, so their haploid number is what? Six. Six. Whereas the parent plant's haploid number is? Six. Is what? Three. Oh. Two n equals six, three, right? So they can't go back and breed with the parents, and this is reproductively isolating. <coughs> Um, and so that is autopolyploidy. Other bio buddy, you're up for allopolyploidy. Go. Um, No, no, that makes sense, but how does it? Okay, so this is um, where you look at today's bread wheat, you can go back and look and you can say, whoa, a bunch of those chromosomes are with this wild wheat species and a bunch of their chromosomes are from this and you can see then that that is evidence of allopolyploidy. The way I remember that for me are these two L's. This, that's just how it works. The two L's represent two different species. That's how, as opposed to autopolyploidy. Yes? So for autopolyploidy and allopolyploidy, because it's causing speciation, would you say this is like a mistake meiosis or are they doing this on purpose? No, it, evolution is not willful. You know, there's no purpose behind evolution. It's just whatever survives and can make it, who lives, who's not killed off by chance or who is selected for because they have the best traits. That's what it happens. So there's no willful evolution. It's not like, try hard. Who would say that? Lamar. Yeah. So this is just, it happens. It's just that plants seem to have more wiggle room with their chromosomes than we do. Think about what is the most common autosomal um, trisomy. Do you remember what that is? Trisomy 21. And what is that? Down syndrome. That's just one extra chromosome 21. Chromosome 21 is really small relative to all the other chromosomes, yet we just have that one extra one and an individual has Down syndrome, right? So think about this. They have whole extra sets and somebody else's chromosomes in allopolyploidy and they're still making it. So plants seem to be able to withstand that better than we can. Okay. All right, you're going to decide with your bio buddy which one is this. Do it quietly so everybody gets a chance to think. Which one is this? Is this autopolyploidy or allopolyploidy? Decide with your bio buddy. And I said whisper because I didn't want everybody to hear. What? Informing the viewers. Oh, I see. 
Hey viewers, I hope you did really well at your competition band. They're a band. They're for honor band for like the state, right? Oh, is it for? I thought they were auditioning. Uh, I mean, they got in. They already got they're in. Top band. And they're going to be in it. Yeah, they, oh, so it's already a done deal. They're in it. Yeah, yeah. they're in the Oh, so, but he didn't know, like, the, like, what no chair they're going to be. So that would be the part where they have to perform, and then they decide what chair, because they had to learn all the parts, which is awesome. Okay, so what kind of polyploidy is this? Aloe. Aloe, because it's two different, what, species, and then we're forming a third species here. Okay, perfect. All right, here you go. Slate, you're in charge of the left column. Blue, you're in charge of the right column. Explain what happens. Go. So what's here on the left? Allopatric. So the barrier was this water coming through, and they went their own ways because they had different initial gene frequencies, different selection pressures, different mutations. Here, this is probably, probably what kind of speciation? What? Yeah, definitely sympatric speciation because they're living side by side. Okay. I don't see. I see one species becoming two species. So which one do you think it is? Auto polyploidy or allo polyploidy? Auto. Auto, right? Because allo, I'd have two species forming a third, right? So since there's only two there, then I think it's auto polyploidy. It would be my guess. I would make an argument for that. All right, so we have allopatric speciation. We have sympatric speciation. Do I owe you notes for that? Yes. Yes, I do. Define species. <coughs> Bless you. Speciation without a geographic barrier usually involves a divergence, divergence in diet or microhabitat. Think cichlid fish edges in open water. So that's a fish. It can live on the edge or the open water. So that would be a microhabitat. Um, or chromosome. Or chromosome. Polyploidy is when you are more than two N and it's more likely in plants. Autopolyploidy, two N plant produces two N gametes due to what do you call that when you fail to separate? Non disjunction. Allopolyploidy, two different but related species hybridize, then a doubling of chromosome. All right, we've got allopatric, we've got sympatric. Let's look at adaptive radiation. And you already know about these guys, it's Darwin's finches. Okay, so you have a single ancestral species. Remember the island talk we had? It's like that. They're each exploiting, that's radiation like spokes on a wheel, exploiting every bit of that environment. Now, Darwin's finches, you've heard about many times, but what is even more interesting, these are 13 different species from an ancestral finch. In Hawaii, the honey creepers, there are 20 plus different species just from one ancestral finch. I've got four dead ones stacked up here on the side for you to look at, so you could compare their beaks. Hashtag thank you. <laughs> All right. So on your notes for adaptive radiation, defined single ancestral species gives rise to a variety of new species. Often involves sympatric species, the removal of a competitor or predator, that's what you were talking about, predator, right? Okay, um, or a change in environment, then ecological relief. So like, yay, the predator's gone, let's spread out more. So opportunity for a species to expand its use of resources within habitats that now have less competition. Slate, can you tell them about number three, please? And now we will do a Kahoot. So if you're not Kahooting with us, um, you could watch it to see what answers you would pick. Um, or fast forward, I'm going to keep talking about speciation as I go forward. <laughs>
Jeremy, don't do it. Wait, no, you weren't doing it by that was me. All right, here you go. That was not me. Go into something fun. On TikTok? Yes. Okay, let's do it. That'd be fun. Oh, wait, we're actually doing it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's going to be somebody with all the bots. Wait, they have bots? Yeah. yeah. You can still Long try. Story. Trust, trust the kids, though. Oh, trust the kids. Okay. Wait. You think people from other schools? No, I don't want team up. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to push go live. Oh, three, two, one, here we go. Hi guys. Um my students suggested that you might want to play our Kahoot with us, so we are streaming live. Can I flip my phone around yeah. when I'm doing it? Yeah. Where's my flippy part? Because I don't know how to work up. What? Here we go. Did I? There we go. So here. Oh, schnizy. Flip. I got it. Okay, here you go. Here's your code. If you want to join us. Go in is something fun, nothing inappropriate. Otherwise, I need to get rid of you. <laughs> okay, we're going to start... Oh, yeah, we need 25. We got 25 in here. Hurry up. Can I turn this sideways, or will it be sideways on their phone? Oh, I can see you. All right. Anybody else joining us out there? We have 25 people in this classroom. Nobody's joining us. Can you see how much this girl says, I am out of school already. They're frantically typing. They're frantically typing? Yeah, give them like 30 seconds. Okay, we'll give you 30 seconds if you want to join us. It's www.kahoot.it 989-225-A. Oh, welcome. We're so glad you joined us. Oh, hi, Jesse. All right, anybody else want to join? I'm looking to see if you're sane. Okay, this, this Kahoot is about speciation, so hopefully you do a great job. And I'm Okay, here we go. Can you read your answers? Here are your answers. Watch it, watch it, people. That's not you. And circles. 
All right. 22 got that right. Good job, pop bubble wrap. All right, here we go. Guys, can I turn my phone sideways? It'll be sideways for them? Okay. I'm on the podium. Yes, very good. Okay. Now, next. Good job, Pop Bubble Wrap. <laughs> What prevents species from interbreeding? All right, here we go. Good job, smiley face. What are some of the ways in which the re Okay, whoops, sorry. There it is. What are some of the ways in which... I suck at this. Which the reproductive isolating barriers work? Here are your choices. I don't like it. All right, good job. Good job, pop bubble wrap. And then I don't know what that is. Good job, second place. Here's the class you're playing with. Say hi. Wait. Hello from New Jersey. I'm doing my bio homework right now. Good job, Chris. Do your bio homework. I'm proud of you. Hi from Russia, from Jacques. Yes, Jacques is from Russia. Okay, good job, Pop Bubble Wrap. Is nobody going to take Pop Bubble Wrap down? Bro, get it wrong. Post-psychotic barriers could keep species isolated by. All right, here we go. Pop bubble wrap still in. No, wait, no, I got it wrong. Wait. Jacques, I, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Jacques Necker, you're also doing your bio homework. I'm very proud of you. Good job. Good job, Good job Jacques. All right, hot bubble wrap. Taking control, not releasing post zygotic barriers. Here we go. Post zygotic barriers. Wait. Kevin, what'd you put? It's triangle. Can you recommend me some study tips? I absolutely can, Regan. Woo, we have a new leader. Kate, how do I say that? Just say Lenny Face. Lenny Face? Lenny Face. Okay, good job, con videos. And Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Reagan, what are you studying? Are you doing biology? Or are you doing AP? <laughs> All right. What do I call that again? Lenny face. Okay, good job, Lenny face. I know. Do you like that? Mechanical isolation fail. The poor, the poor giraffe uh, couldn't find anybody else, so a donkey had to do. 
Lenny Faze, good job. Jacques, you're a winner? Which one are you? How is that true or false? What? What? Well, you have to like read, there's two true options and, or three true options and one false. So you gotta pick the right one. Hybrid inviability is when Wait, I got right, it wrong. Wait, I got it wrong. Wait, I got it wrong. Wait, no. No. I'm still on the podium. Oh. Are you on the podium? <laughs> Are you? Okay, Leonard, Leonard Face is Lenny Face. That's not any of you in here, right? That's me. Oh, it is you? Yeah. Oh. Wait, I thought you said you. Wait, that's not. It's. Yeah. Shock. I'm like a two year old. I'm like a two year old. I'm like a two year old. Scoreboard, we're still. What, let's see, Smiley Face has the highest answer streak of six. Good job, Smiley. <laughs> Think about how do we, what do we use to classify extinct species? Could they be a fossil, perhaps? Oh. Remember, guys, come back to me. Morphological species, remember about structure because they're extinct? Okay. All right, Lenny Faze, con videos, up five places, churros. Good job, churros. Two questions left. What is genetic isolation? One. Oh, your con videos. I was just joking. Okay. It's green. It's green. It's green. It's green. <laughs> there is no green. All right. All right. Last question. Here we go. Ready? Avne is making a comeback with three in a row. Good job. Last question. <laughs> Here's the class working hard. Way hard. I know I showed it to them, they had to think fast. Life's difficult. <laughs> All right, let's see who the winner winner chicken dinner. Podium spots. Nice. Second. Con videos. First. Nice. Well, um, we hope you had fun um, hanging out in our class. Um, I'm going to go back. We have more lecture to do. I hope you're having a great day. Um, <laughs> okay. We had 31. I think I closed this. We had 31 people who were watching. <laughs> okay. Next. Got to close out Kahoot. All right. Next. Convergent. We hope that was fun for you. Um, convergent evolution.
Um, young is bio, but explain what that is. Go for it. Organisms not closely related independently evolve similar traits as a result of having to adapt to similar environments or ecological All right. So these organisms, what would you call these structures when it's the same structure but they're not related? Analogous, Analogous structures. Oldest bio buddy, here's yours. Go ahead. <coughs> It is. It was just different examples. All right. And here's one more. Uh, these are cichlids in two different lakes. So they were not able to go back and forth. But look at their evolution over time, how much they mirrored each other in their evolution from those two different lakes. Okay, so that um, if they have an ancestral species, then this would be parallel evolution. But if they don't share an ancestral species, it would be convergent evolution. Okay, and now we're going to go back to the dewlaps. Okay, this is the anolian lizard. I always think, what might they have you read about that you have to graph or have an essay? So I want you to be familiar with it. Um, the anolian lizard is exa two examples adaptive radiation. Youngest bio buddy, tell them what adaptive radiation is. What was the example of adaptive radiation? Darwin's finches or the honey creepers, right? So there is both adaptive radiation and convergent evolution, and it's on several islands, the same thing again and again and again. Okay, and so it's a good example of that. So this is a, what do you call it, not a crypt, an animation, I guess, um, of what could have gone down. Um, pay attention to the words. <laughs> Bless you. Two groups of animals are defined as different species when individuals from one group don't mate and reproduce with those from the other. transitional forms in that, kind of like the horse, how we saw that over time. And then a quicker way would be punctuated equilibrium. 
And in those situations, you would not see a lot of transitional forms. Now, quick, and quick evolution um, is deemed that it happens within a million years. That's quick, okay? Now, um, punctuated equilibrium, the way I remember that that's the fast one is I hear punch inside of punctuated, and I think punches should be fast, faster than a million years, but punctuated equilibrium is very quick. So on your notes, um, introduction, models of evolution, gradualistic models, speciation occurs after populations <coughs> become isolated, each group continuing slowly on its evolutionary path, many transitional links. Punctuated equilibrium model, species can appear quite suddenly, followed by a period of stasis or equilibrium. And it could be both, depending on how quickly the environment changes. Okay, um, take your turn there, blue and slate. Yes. Oh, my bad. Thank you. Sorry. Convergent evolution is defined. It occurs when a biological, when biological traits, when a biological trait, that should be plural, evolves in two unrelated species as a result of exposure to similar environments. And I said, think analogous structures. And I gave you some examples. All right. The last part is also review. Do you remember when we were studying development and we were looking at similarities in species due to their Hox genes is what we were looking at? Okay, so that is what this is about, is looking at um, macro evolution and genes. So the intro, all organisms share the same control switches for development. Now, remember control switches, when it says later chapter, because it was chapter 42, which came after this chapter, but you've already learned it. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, right? And, okay. And differences in timing and expression. Differences in timing and expression. Blue, I want you to talk about development of the eye using your notes, and the word you need is all. Go ahead. <coughs> Pass. <laughs> So who has the PAC-6 gene? All organisms. And it's all related to the development of their what? Eyes. But you could have different timing and different um, expression of that gene. Okay? Um, and then this would be slate. And your word, you have all your words. Um, here you go. TBX5 gene. So this is a transcription factor for limb buds. So we have two legs and two arms. Birds have two legs and they have what instead? Two wings. But their wings and our arms are what? Homologous structures because we share the? That's where it comes from. Okay? Um, blue, you're on the next one. Go ahead. This is review. Hawks genes. Go ahead. And the word you need is all. Go ahead. This is that segmentation. Okay? And this just shows you the Hox genes again, segmentation. Okay? So you can see there's one of these, there might be more in some of these other species. All right, and then the last one, and this would be slate. Go ahead about the pelvic fin. You have all your words. So in this case, you might be losing a gene because right here, okay, you're not getting much of these hind fins because you're at the bottom of the water instead of the top and it's not helpful. So your promoter is taken out for that gene, but even though you had a common ancestor that had, had it or your timing, you don't express it as long and so your fin is not as long. So for human evolution, 
Humans have 23,000 genes approximately, maybe closer to 30,000. Investigators now look for, for new functions for old genes. New functions for old genes. Now you could get these new functions due to timing and your, your, the way you express that trait, right? Um, all genes can have chance mutations that cause variation and natural selection acts on variations that are already present. Okay. Now, have you seen this before? Yes. Yeah. yes, you have, and that's so wrong. Oldest bio buddy, you explain why this is not evolution. Use that right there. Go ahead. So this is showing like it was goal-oriented. It doesn't show any of the other branches that occur. That's why this, uh, uh, this one is better. And so, youngest bio buddy, you explain why this is evolution. I'll make it bigger for you. Yep. And that is the end of chapter 17. Um, we didn't get to have any of our sex today, which is fine because we're missing one, two people, right? Yeah. Okay. So make sure you read the lab too because that's what we're going to go into right after the shorter test, right? Because we're only doing multiple choice. Okay. So it's the lab not going to be on multiple choice. What? Is the lab not going to be on a multiple No, it's going to be on the essay part. Okay. Yeah. So you don't need to know anything. I mean, and no highly suggested, right? No highly suggested. That'll be in the essay part too. No step further, yes. All right, hope you're having fun. Bye.